Hi, how are we doing? I'm Ben from EQL Networks and Security. Today we'll be taking a look at what a network switch and what a router is and how they work. Look, if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on our socials to stay up to date with our latest network tips, news and reviews designed to save you time. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business. So now let's get right into this. So let's start off with what a switch is. A switch is basically a network device that looks something like this and enables a device on a network to communicate with each other via ethernet cables. So you can connect a variety of devices to a switch ranging from computers, printers, gaming consoles, TVs, wireless access points, CCTV cameras, alarms, intercoms, and even other multiple switches to each other. So switches are able to communicate with these devices individually through a feature known as a content addressable memory table, or CAM for short. So, but this table is also commonly known as a MAC table. So this table can be thought of like a traffic controller. Its job is to direct data to a specific address on the network via the MAC address of the device. Basically, the MAC address is a unique identifier which is similar to how mail can get delivered to your door. So basically, the post guy knows where to deliver stuff. When it comes to selecting a switch, there are two types to choose from. Basically, you've got a managed switch and an unmanaged switch. The main difference between the two switches is that an unmanaged switch, sometimes referred to as a dumb switch, is pre-configured with settings by the manufacturer that can't be changed. Managed switches, on the other hand, come with smart features enabling the user to customize, tweak, monitor their switch, and even devices connected to it with more freedom and flexibility. For example, you can remotely access your switch settings via a browser interface and turn ports on and off to power cycle devices such as your cameras, you know, if they constantly keep going on and off and online, backwards and forwards. When choosing a switch, it's important first to plan ahead and decide how you would like to build your network system. Doing this will drastically save you time and installation costs. The last thing you want to do is purchase a switch with limited port or functionality that won't meet your needs. When or why should I use a switch? Basically, using a switch enables the ability to connect to more devices to your network. If you run out of space on your router, ideally, you'd go to a network switch. And if you're developing a security system, it's best to purchase a switch that brings this um, or brings more features into it. So the next thing is our, our devices like routers. So we've got a router over here. In a nutshell, a router is a network device that provides internet access and data to your devices on your local area network, or LAN for short. It's basically the gateway that allows internet to flow into your network from the modem. So a modem is what allows internet into your home or business. Routers can come in a variety of different models depending on its manufacturer and can serve multiple purposes such as acting like a switch to connect multiple network devices together or act as a wireless access point to wirelessly connect devices to the internet. It can also act as an all-in-one type of modem where you've got your modem, your router, your wireless access points all, all bundled into one. The router is also responsible for issuing IP addresses to devices on your local network. These help identify each other's device, so then you basically connect and the router can send and receive information to those devices and allow them to communicate with another. In summary, I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but in summary, a switch can be thought of as an extension if the router has run out of ports, and a router is what provides internet access for your devices on the network. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, let us know below. If you continue watching, check out our video on how to get two IP cameras over the same cable. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on our socials to stay up to date with our latest network tips, news and reviews designed to save you time. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business.